Welcome to the Divine Light of the Most Holy One. Selections from the Kabbalistic Zohar, Part 2 of 2, and Words of Wisdom. Kabbalah is the ancient mystical school of thought of Judaism, literally meaning the received. Kabbalah is also an esoteric method believed to have been revealed to elect saints and preserved by a certain few since the time of the Garden of Eden. Kabbalah aims to explain the relationship between God, the unchanging and eternal aims of the infinite, and God's creation, the mortal and finite universe. Kabbalists developed their own sacred texts, especially during the Middle Ages. These texts, however, still remained within the Jewish tradition as they often worked with scriptures from the Hebrew Bible to demonstrate the extraordinary teachings of the Kabbalah. One of the most foundational of the Kabbalistic texts is the Sefer HaSohar, a Kabbalistic commentary on the Torah, which means the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. The Zohar, which scholars believe was recorded mainly by the 13th century Spanish mystic rabbi Moses de Leon, presents profound discussions on many topics, such as redemption, prayer, and the nature of God, the cosmos, and souls. The word Zohar means brightness and refers to the light manifestation of the divine. Today we will continue with selections from the Great Holy Assembly, a volume of the Zohar where Rabbi Shimon led a group of holy sages through a discussion on the divine light and wisdom as symbolized by the facial features of Macroprosopus. Macroprosopus is an aspect of divine emanation in the Kabbalah representing divine will and the source of divine compassion. The Zohar introduces the concept of divine configurations, and in the Book of Concealed Mystery, another volume of the Zohar, the various facial features of Macroprosopus are explained, along with the representation of the divine qualities. Thus, in our readings today, there will be physical descriptions of various facial features of Macroprosopus along with discussions by Rabbi Shimon and other holy sages regarding the divine quality that each part represents, as well as supporting evidence from the Hebrew Bible. Chapter 6 Concerning the Membrane of the Brain of Macroprosopus In the hollow of the skull is the aerial membrane of the supreme hidden wisdom, which is nowhere disclosed, and it is not found, and it is not opened and that membrane enshrouds the brain of the hidden wisdom, and therefore is that wisdom covered. And that brain, which is itself the hidden wisdom, is silent and remains tranquil in its place, and this is that which they say, hidden is the science of the Ancient One, and his brain is calm and concealed. Nevertheless, he impresses it as the sign of the Ancient of Days, from whom depends the perfection of knowledge, because he is perfect on every side, and hidden, and tranquil, and silent. Chapter 7 Concerning the Hair of Macroprosopus This is a tradition. From the skull of his head hang down thousand thousand myriads, seven thousand and five hundred curling hairs, white and pure and in single curls are four hundred and ten locks of hair, according unto the number of the word, holy. But these hairs, all and singular, radiate into four hundred and ten worlds. But these worlds alone are hidden and concealed, and no man knows them, save himself. And he radiates in seven hundred and twenty directions, and in all the hairs is a fountain, which issues from the hidden brain behind the wall of the skull. The curls of his hair hang down in order, and pure even unto the rise of his shoulders, so that his neck may not be seen. And the hair is less close to the ears, lest it should cover, because it is written, as thine arm are open. From hence his hair stretches out behind his ears, the whole is in equilibrium, one hair does not go beyond another hair. They are in perfect disposition and beautiful arrangement and orderly condition. 
It is the delight and joy of the just, the desire to behold and to conform unto that confirmation which is in the Ancient One, the most concealed of all. He appears, and He appears not. He is concealed, and He is not concealed, and that is, in His confirmation, much more so than in Himself. In the parting of the hair proceeds a certain path, which shines into two hundred and seventy worlds, and from that again shines a path wherein the just of the world to come shall shine. That is what is written, Proverbs 4:18, and the path of the just shall shine as a light, going forth and shining more and more unto the perfect day. As it is written concerning him, all the paths of the Tetragrammaton are mercy and truth. Chapter 8 Concerning the Forehead of Macroprosopus The forehead of his call is the acceptation of acceptations, like as it is written, Exodus 28:38, and it shall be upon his forehead always for acceptation, and that forehead is called will power, because it is the ruler of the whole head and of the skull, which is covered by four hundred and twenty worlds. And when it is uncovered, the prayers of the Israelites ascend. When is it uncovered? Rabbi Shimon was silent. He asked again a second time, When? Rabbi Shimon said unto Rabbi Eliezer, his son, in the time of the offering of the evening prayer on the Sabbath. This is that which is written, and I have prayed unto thee, O Tetragrammaton, in an acceptable time. And the time of acceptance by the Ancient of Days is here to be understood and of the unveiling of the forehead, and because it is thus disposed at the offering of the evening prayer and the Sabbath. Rabbi Shimon spoke unto Rabbi Elisha, his son, and said, Blessed be thou, O my son, by the Ancient of Days, For thou hast found in that time in which thou hast need the acceptation of his forehead. But when his forehead is uncovered, inclination and acceptation are found in perfect form, and all wrath is quieted and subdued before him. From that forehead shine forth four hundred habitations of judgments. When it is uncovered during that period of acceptation, all things are at peace before it. This is the same which is written, Daniel 7.10. The judgment was set, that is, subsides in its place, and the judgment is not exercised. And this is the tradition, there is no hair found on that part, because it is opened and not covered. It is covered, I say, and the executors of judgment behold this, and are pacified, and judgment is not exercised. This is the tradition. This forehead has been extended into two hundred and seventy thousand lights of the luminaries of the superior Eden. This is the tradition. There exists an Eden which shines in Eden, the superior Eden which is not uncovered, and is hidden in concealment, and is not distributed into the paths, like as it has been said. But no man has known the superior Eden, nor its paths, except Macroprosopus himself, like as it is written, Job 28:23. God understands the way thereof, and he knows the place thereof. The Elohim understand the way thereof, and he has known the place thereof. This is the superior Eden, which the Ancient of Days has known, the most abstruse of all. Vegan Because we are not sadistic. Kind-hearted viewers, it was a delight that you could join us today for Words of Wisdom. 